First things first, if you are at work, I would go ahead and slide in those earbuds. You will thank me later. Now let's get down to business. My name is James Reeves and you're watching TFB TV. Many of you who regularly watch the program know that I was at a Surefire event earlier this summer for the release of the Surefire XSC. That is their super ultra compact light made for the Glock 43X and 48 MOS, the SIG P365 and P365XL, and a third variant made for the Springfield Hellcat. Had a great time, and they called it Battle of the Bills. This was the second year that they brought together two instructors, Bill Rapier, Navy SEAL, and Bill Blowers, Army, and 25 years of SWAT. Two of the best instructors that you could possibly hang with and train with. So I've made a couple of clinical videos. Today, we are going to do four tips to make you a better carbine shooter. We're going to have a couple of drills at the end, and they're not really like individual pointers per se. This is something you need to follow. They're like steps, and then you're going to roll straight into the drills, and you're going to do these drills over and over and over, repeat the steps as necessary. I promise you, in an afternoon, buy a half case of ammo. I know that costs as much as a car right now, but get a half case of 223 for your AR-15. Go to the range with your buddies, do these drills, you will become a better carbine shooter in an afternoon. It really makes you focus on what you're doing wrong. Now, it's not my drill to name, but if I were to name this drill anything, it would be the let's frig with some poo. Because as Bill's about to tell you, what we do in this video is we frig with our poo a little bit until we find the poo that works and we get rid of the poo that doesn't work if you know what I'm saying. You know what, I'm just gonna let Bill take it away. I don't give a fuck how you guys are running your rifles, where you're putting them on, your, on yourself, that type of shit, uh, but you should be proving it to yourself that it's the best way to get it done, right? So we're gonna fuck with some shit. A couple of things here, right? And this is what I am doing, um, but I'm gonna have you guys fuck with some shit to see what it is that you're doing. Does that make sense? All right, so uh, a thing, uh, first and foremost, is uh, how I'm hanging onto the gun, right? The, um, where I'm holding it, that type of shit. So for me, I wanna be out as far as I can on the end of the rail uh, for a couple of reasons. If this were a big old cattle gate and it's hinged back here at the buttstock, um, thing weighs 400 pounds, where would you push it to get it moving? Most further side out. Oh, how come? Why? Oh. Uh, leverage. Leverage, physics, the whole shit, right? It's just the further you're out on it, the easier it is to get it moving. Conversely, it's now swinging really good. This farmer keeps his gate really oiled uh, nicely. And now you got to stop it before it overswings and rips the post out of the ground. Where would you stop it? Would you run back here and do it or would you stay out there and do it? Same goddamn thing, right? So the further I am out there, I can snap the gun quicker target to target, but I can also stop it quicker target to target uh, and, and, and do a better job. So that's a thing to consider, not the thing, but a thing to consider. Uh, second piece of this is uh, I'm putting some backward pressure on the gun um, as it's in, in my shoulder pocket. And so the further that hand is out on the end, the easier is me to pull back. If I'm compressed in here, like back in the day with an MP5, I'm using all fucking biceps at this point, uh, which is fatiguing, but I get less pull on the gun overall versus if I'm way out on the end. Everybody tracking me on that shit? Okay. Second piece of that in then is where my stock is located. So if I collapse it all of the way, I'm back into arms being slightly compressed a little bit more, which means I'm using more bicep again to pull the gun into me. The farther I can stretch it out, the easier it's going to be for me to pull back on it. Everybody with me on that thing? This hand, in my case, lefty with the rifle, right-handed with the pistol. Obviously, hanging on the pistol grip, working the controls, doing all that type of jazz. Uh, and it is slightly pulling back into my pocket as well, but doesn't require a whole lot. My support hand's doing most of the pulling. Everybody good to go with that stuff? Okay. All of the action on the gun is coming along a specific axis or line within the gun. And that axis is right there, right? So as the bolt's reciprocating, it's all coming down through the uh, receiver extension, the buffer tube, uh, and it's impacting me about right in here. So I'm gonna try to compress the gun so that this part of the stock is as close to being to my shoulder as practical or possible. Your mount height will have something to do with that. The type of optic you guys have on the guns will have something to do with that, all that kind of bullshit. But the lower I can get it, typically the stronger I'm going to be. It's a center of, of balance type of shit. Good to go with that stuff. Okay, so my stance, man, uh, as far as what I'm doing with my feet uh, and that kind of thing, um, pretty basic shit over the years, very simply. 
Now the lefty, this is my shit. So me and Roger are gonna have us a little fighting competition. This is kind of how I was set up on him, right? I can throw my ranging punches at him, get off me, how far away is he, and be ready to light him up with something else. Um, but I'm basically standing like this, balanced position. And so what I determined was my best stance for all of those things was just my natural fighting stance, whatever that may look like. So I'm gonna push you on your ass. Do not let me do it. So you can see how he just set himself up, right? Because he thought I was gonna impact him. But look at his feet. Look how he's standing, look how he's doing shit naturally for the fight. So I'm not gonna try to change that, right? It's just gonna be a natural stance. The only thing I'm doing is chilling. And then as I bring the gun up to shoot, I'm gonna load up a little bit on the forward side. Other thing that I'm doing, some minor things that I'm doing is how much pressure am I pulling back with this uh, arm? Um, I, I, considerable, I guess, would be the word I would use, uh, but not so drastic that I get muscle fatigue or, or shaking of the weapon and that kind of thing. Um, the better part of this for me is my left shoulder. As I'm firing, I just call it active shoulder. I'm gonna throw my shoulder against the gun as hard as I possibly can, trying to make it stick there and do what it needs to do. Everybody with me on that stuff? So watch the gun here. Uh, I'm gonna kick on my laser, and you can also watch the laser running around out there on the target. So I'm gonna shoot this bottom B8, and in fact, you can just watch the laser, maybe a more, uh, actually watch me the first time. So check how I'm set up on the gun. How's this gonna go for me? So watch the gun for a second here, and if you want to, you can look down range at the laser. I'm going to fire six shots. Okay, so pretty rapid pace on that thing. What kind of control did I have over the gun, though? Going all over the place, right? Now, if you look at my target, I think I scored one miss out there on that thing. The rest are inside of the, uh, the eight ring. So my stance, even though it's pretty shitty, I'm still getting some success with stuff. Now, I'm just going to change something real quick. Again, you can watch me or watch the laser on the bouncing. And all I'm going to do now is take this super shitty stance and I'm going to change one thing and that is I'm going to lower the gun into my pocket like I was talking about, right? So that's where the recoil wants to come. Now if you want to watch it down range. All right, so I'm shooting a little bit faster, but how much better control of the gun did I end up with? It's considerable. So I know changing my technique is giving me some control of the gun. You guys with me here? All right, so next thing that I'm going to do now is take my sling based on how I'm wrapped into it. I'm going to come in and use that as a means to help support the rifle as well. Keep my shoulder into it. I'm going to come back, put another five or six out there. All right, so shooting faster. Gun started to become more controllable. This, that, the other thing. I'm going to go through that again, throw my shoulder at it. I'm going to go at it again, pull like a motherfucker. I'm going to keep changing and adding shit through every uh, cycle of five or six and see if what I get for a benefit downrange. Now, your, your gauge for this, your method for determining this is, in your guys' case, red dot movement. And if you can't keep it in the black at seven yards, shooting at that pace, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, that's how you have to shoot it, then I want you to be changing something up. Maybe load the legs up a little bit more. Maybe pull more with your support hand. Pull a little bit more with your strong hand. Throw some more shoulder at it change your foot positioning, whatever the fuck it is, and, and, and fuck with shit for a minute here to see if it gives you a, a value added or not. And if there's value added, keep it. If it doesn't help you, then shit can it. Or if, you know what I mean? It's looking for your best stance, your best control of the gun based on all of these uh, uh, basic things that we have talked about. Everybody tracking me on what we're trying to get done here? Yeah. Grab a target up, seven yard line, and you're gonna go through two magazines, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and just change some shit each time. On you, do it up. Two mags full, make it happen, yo. Change something, change something, change something. Lean on that gun harder, right? Load your legs up. Raise the stock, lower the stock. Right, compress your stock all the way in and try it. Pull the stock all the way out and try it. Change something each time, right? Be experimenting. Be curious. Be a curious George. Fucking around with, with different ways to hang on the gun, fucking around with the stance a little bit, uh, trying to see where we're at with the case, what you can do to control the gun. We work the skill in isolation a little bit. Uh, we come and check the skill. Now we're going to hit a drill to, to test the fucking skill, the capability with the fucking skill. So, so mounting the gun, man, it's completely up to you how the fuck you're going to do it. Don't care, right? Just what is working best for you. So we, we fuck around a little bit. I can kind of see my dot moving. Uh, try to demo it with you guys with the laser beam so you could see uh, what my changes to technique up does to my overall recoil management, recoil control of the gun. And now we're just going to fucking prove it, right? So it's one thing to shit there and shoot. Can I keep it in the black? Uh, but now can we do something with it? So we're going to do a little bit of cadence shooting. This has nothing to do with gunfighting or anything else. It's just a check measure for me to see whether or not I'm controlling the gun at an acceptable fucking pace. So I'm going to shoot mine real quick. I'll hit that top target. And what I'm going to do uh, is attempt to keep everything inside the 10 ring on that B8. So there's a 8, eight 9, 10, and X. Got to keep it in the 10. And so I'm going to see if I can manage this at a one-second pace. So I'm just going to count it off to myself. One, 1,000, two, 1,000 kind of thing. Uh, don't forget your offset on this thing and see if I can control the gun. One, 
1,000, 1,000, 1,000, So I got that, right? So now I'm going to graduate from that one second uh, dealio, uh, and I'm going to hit it again now with some half second exposures or a uh, half second splits. I'm going to run that at one and two and three kind of thing so I can keep it in there. So one and two and three and four and five. Gun went up on me a little bit. Did I keep it in there? No, it's way the fuck above it. So I did not graduate on that one. I'm going to hit it again, one and two and three. If I get it two times in a row, then I'm going to move to the next one. The next one is about quarter second split, so I'm going to see if I can control the gun with quarter seconds into that 10 ring. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, missed one again, so I would stick now on that one until I get it a couple times in a row. Again, thinking about my stance, what am I doing, but also getting me to a point where I'm, I'm controlling the gun at some level of speed. Everybody with me here? So you're on your own. 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000 foot, uh, touch football in the backyard shit. Get that twice in a row, all round stand in. Go to one and two and threes. Get that twice in a row. Go to one, two, three, four, fives. Two to three magazines trying to get you to the one, two, three, four, five range. If you can't get it, don't sweat it. That's not the test, right? We're just trying to see what we can do to control the gun now with a reasonable level of accuracy. Every occur, we're getting done. Let's make it happen, Jackson. See, what did I tell you? Excellent drill. It really makes you focus on every aspect of your shooting stance and it challenges you to address each issue on a microscopic scale and then you put it all back together. You run your drill, you see how it works and you tweak things until you find out what works best for you. It isn't you have to do it this way or you have to do it that way. It's let's fuck with some shit, as Bill says, and find out what works. I think this was a great drill. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks as usual to Surefire for having us. Thank you to our sponsors, Blue Alpha Gear, Federal Ammunition, Ventura Munitions, and Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. But thank you most of all to you all for watching. And please do us a favor if you enjoyed the video and subscribe. It costs you nothing, helps us out a ton. Take care.